Well gone guys, it's your boy Jack, AKA the Balding Reefer, coming at you with today's video, which is part three of the facility build. So let's go. So we're up here with Benny Boy, building away. Happy new year to everybody that is watching. Uh, I thought I'd start at the front and show you the view with all the snow on, because I know a few of you were commenting last time how pretty that was. Let me just quickly switch you around. There we go, sun's beating down. It's not really that cold today, to be fair. But it is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to see what it's like in the summer when all these trees have got the leaves back on them and stuff like that. Um, but we've got a lot done today, haven't we? Yeah, cracking on. An awful lot done. We're about to run out of block. Um, we're probably going to complete two pods today, so I'm hoping that we can get that on video. We have been up here for a couple of hours this morning. Uh, we borrowed Dave's tipper to bring the rest of the blocks up from mine, from the other build that we did uh, on my indoor pods. Link above there if you've not already seen that but here's where we are at oh no edit that out okay so we brought all the other blocks up uh on dave's tip out that we did earlier on cement uh mixes full of mortar at the minute but this is where we're up to today pod four is just beginning from this back corner here we've got to go we've got to go another three on but i thought i'd go through the nitty gritty with you today in regards to how we're laying the blocks how we're doing it making sure that we're half bond on the brickwork and stuff like that which again i'll uh, show you in a second uh for the mortar mix though we are just using a mix of four to one so we're using four um shovels worth of just normal red building sand uh, and then we've got these lafarge uh, cement bags which we've got to go down and pick up some more because we've got three left we started off with nine was it nine started, so. nine so to this point here we've pretty much got f uh, five bags worth of cement in there the red bucket is full of mix down there uh, and we are occasionally added in a little bit of uh, washing up liquid now the reason we add the washing up liquid in here is it does make the cement an awful awful lot more workable um now what i'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly explain what I mean by brick on edge. I'm going to show you me putting a mortar bed down, how we butter up the bricks, how we're laying them, and how we're making sure they are all straight and level. So, by half bond, what I mean is if you see this block here, obviously we've got the mortar bed in here, and then halfway down the brick, that's actually called half bond. So you need to make sure that your joints are all staggered like this, all the way down. Now the reason for that is that's going to interlock all the bricks. So if you think when back, think back to when you were a kid when you're building Lego, obviously if you just stack all the Lego blocks up, they've got no real strength in them. However, if you build brick on edge, you've got an awful lot more strength in there. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm pretty confident we could drive a van at that at the moment. It may crack, but it's definitely going to write the van off. Um, to speed things up, what I like to do personally is lay quite a long bed of cement all the way around butter up a load of bricks as we go put them all down and then level the whole line round as we go so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly swap you over to ben and ben is going to be my trusty cameraman on this one so it's relatively simple with it being brick on edge it's just a matter of slapping down a load of muck and making sure that we've got two runs. The reason for that is because obviously we're going uh, brick facing down. We want to make sure that there's enough mortar bond over all the bricks. Now what we don't want to do is just lay the, the brickwork straight on top of that. What we want to do is get the front of the trowel and just put it in and just create that V movement all the way through. What that's going to do it's going to enable us an air pocket that when we push the block down, it's actually going to sit on this middle bit here. It's going to give us a little bit more height that we can then tap all of the block work down. If you've got a little bit of a gap like this here, don't worry about it. It's just a matter of getting a little bit more muck, throwing it in, and then starting off your V very quickly again. Now, normally what I like to do is I'll lay the one block now. I'll then pause the video. I'll butter up the load, and then I'll show you how I quickly go through uh, and actually put these blocks down and then we can move on to how we actually level on them. But all we want to do to butter up the edge, this is what I mean by buttering up. So we want to put a, a slop of mortar on there. We want to come down. We want to create, whether you can see that or not, we're going to create a little bit of a V 
on the block work itself. And what that's going to do then is it, it's going to give us that bed to sit up next to this bit here. <clears throat> when we come down to lay the block, what we want to do is come down on an angle like that. So in essence, we'd, we'd come down and we'd slide it down. What that's going to do is it's going to give us maximum amount of adhesion on the mortar onto the next brick that is currently sat here. Now these bricks here have already gone off, so we haven't got to worry about knocking them or anything like that. And I've not got my gloves on, so I need to be careful on this one. I'll just do it to eye for the time being, and then I'll come along afterwards with a spirit level, and I'll show you how I actually make sure they're all level onto the next course. Now, if we just borrow that camera a second, what we do on the corner pieces, so this one here is a full block, this one here is a full block, so the next course up will start with a block down here, and the reason for that is obviously we'll meet that half bond piece on that block and then the next block that goes in will go here over to here and again we keep that half bond on there as well your joints you want to try and keep to around 10 mil if possible if you have got some little pockets in here like this don't worry about it because there is a lot of mortar in there and we can always go through uh, afterwards anyway um, and smooth it all out push a little bit more mortar in and make sure that, he's, that it is all flush but again I'm going to be showing you that on this video so let me come back to you in a second when I've put all this bed down butted up a load of these bricks and I'll show you how fast we can actually lay them as we go okay so we've just run out of mortar so Ben's currently mixing through uh, the cement and the sand now so how many is in there? Is it eight and two eight and two so there's basically eight of these shovel worths and two of the cement bits in there now with water always go slow and steady you can always add more you can never take too much out you want the sort of consistency where it hangs on the shovel for just a second and then sort of falls away It'll probably take an average two to three minutes to mix this through properly in a proper cement mixer you can mix it by hand but it is going to be a little bit more of a nightmare and it's going to be very difficult if, you, if you're not fortunate like us to own a cement mixer uh, big shout out to Ben Grand by the way uh, who have bought this off. I know Ben watches the video, so thank you very much, mate. You've, uh, you've really helped us get this to where it is for the time being. So big props and big shout out to you, my friend. Um, if you're not fortunate enough to have one of these, though, you can hire them. I think it's about 35 quid for 48 hours. Um, and as long as you've got all of your bits of equipment that you need to get started with, there's no reason why you can't get all this done within sort of a full 48 to 72 hour period. So what I'll do in a second is I'll snap back in a moment when all this is mixed through. But as you can see, slowly getting there. If it is guys that you are using, the washing up liquid, other brands are available. You need the tiniest bit in there. Like, and I literally mean the tiniest bit. You don't need to go sort of overboard. Have you put any of this in at the moment? Oh, you put in a little dash in, okay. I'll, uh, on the next mix, what I'll try and do is I'll try and get a shot of how much we actually put in. I mean, to be fair, I can actually do it on the brick. You probably just literally need that much. That's it. I wouldn't go any more than that. But as you can see, it's uh, turning its way through now. Okay, so we get in there now. I reckon another minute or so, and we'll be good to go. Let me just grab the troll so I can show you what kind of consistency that we need. So when it's on your troll, second or two like that and then it falls off now this is bad practice you shouldn't really be sticking your troll into a moving drum so for those of you that work in construction that are watching this apologies but yeah that's the kind of mix that you want now the washing up liquid just makes the the mortar a lot more workable uh, especially in the heat it stops it going off as quick but that there's the kind of consistency that you want that when you're picking it up it's falling off the troll. You can easily put your bed in without it falling down on itself like that. So I'll show you up there with a the, with the light a bit better. There you go. You can see the steps in there now. And that's definitely the consistency that you want. Now, let me switch it back over to Ben because we've got the, we've got the bed all laid out. I like to butter up the blocks in one go like this to make it faster and then go down and level them all out in one. There's a lot of people that may be watching this and thinking that's not the way to do it. That's the way I work. 
that's the way I did my own blocks and my um my indoor pods that I built uh, and for me it works and it's all about finding what works for you I'm not a bricky by trade or anything like that just watching videos on YouTube in regards to how to actually do this so let me put my gloves back on and I'll give you back to Ben we've got the blocks all butted up as I mentioned the butted up edge obviously goes without saying it goes on this edge here and we want to try and come over with that downward sort of motion like that just so we cut the top and gives us enough seal on the actual block itself There we go again. Always like to try and do it to eye. Once you've been going at this for a, a little bit of time, you'll naturally start doing it that little bit better each time. But the thing is, with, with block work, it can be very forgiving. You can hide a lot of your mistakes and stuff like that. So, again, I wouldn't be too precious. You can lay out brick lines from corner to corner if you like. For me, that's a little bit too technical. Um, I'd rather just take that extra little bit of time to manually go through and make sure everything's level and things like that as well. So, as you can see, the block flies on when you're doing it this way. So we'll leave that one sitting a little bit high so I can show you what I mean. So now, obviously a little bit more of a better angle, you'll be able to see it in the light. We want to start down here. We just want to chop the top of that mortar bead off, just like that. And then get it in, bring it back in line. Now, what I like to do to start off with, is get my trowel, hold it relatively loose and on the corner, and I want to sort of strike down the brick, just to try and take as much of this off as possible. Obviously we don't want to waste the mix. So I'm not digging into it or anything like that, I'm literally, just striking at the brick to try and get it off. Now, to make sure we are all level. Obviously you want to start off a block that, that you know is level. And obviously we already did this off the corner piece. You just want to be careful of this, the little snots that may be on the brick because it may put you out slightly. Don't worry about it being absolutely perfect because obviously your next bed if there are any slight imperfections, you can actually take that out on the next bed by doing it a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. So what we want to do is start on there. And considering I've done it to eye, let me just take the camera a second. This is what I mean about you sort of picking things up as you go. So I've literally just done that there to eye. We do want to make sure the top's level, but we also want to make sure the sides are level as well. So I'll pass you back to Ben. I'll move them up. I'll, I'll... It's okay, we've got, a, we've got a new cameraman, so we're still at the same point. Ben's just getting used to my phone. He's an iPhone, I'm an Android. So again, on that, bang on. A little bit high there. Now, you can use a proper mallet um, with a, well, a lump hammer, should I say, but it is easier to use it with a mallet. So this here now, this block here, and this one is level. This one's sitting up a little bit high, as you can see. So all you want to do now is find where your high spot is. Just a few gentle taps on there. Obviously, if you're going to be using a proper mallet, just be careful how hard you are beating it because you can, like I say, crack the block. That edge just needs to come down a little bit. So there you go, if you jump on that now then. So obviously it's a lot difficult to do on a longer spirit level, but you can see now that all these blocks are level uh, with each other. What we wanna do now is just go down and make sure they're all in line. So this corner piece here is sticking out a little bit too much for me. Same with that one. There we go. And we'll just put that joint up a little bit more. Because we've moved it, make sure we're level still. Good to go on there. Good to go on there, even though this one's sitting out a tiny bit. And there we go. 
perfecto. So that's my way of actually laying a lot of block in a very, very short space of time. What you want to do afterwards on your actual bed itself, if you've got holes in it like this, is just go through with a little bit of mortar on your trowel. And it's just a matter of coming, coming down. And like I say, just literally refilling that in. There is a special tool where you can basically go down and it puts in the imprint on there for you like that, just to make sure that that bed is completely compact. I'm just using my finger for the time being because it's the other side of the room. <laughs> so another way, obviously we've got a little bit of an out here. Again, not something that I'd worry too much about, but for the perfectionists amongst us, just literally a matter of going down and back filling that in like so. Okay, now, Ben, if you want to come over here. So, obviously now we're getting to the corner piece. What we're actually doing is we're tying the wall in at different segments. And what I mean by that is if you notice here where the join is. So there's a join there. This here is actually a full block. The other side sits a block like that and a block there. So what we need to do is we need to maintain our half bond. For the time being, we can't do that because a full block, if we put it in, that's called jointed. So you'd have a seam on top of another seam. You don't want to do that because it's not going to give you a lot of strength. Now, even like I say, even though I say that the blocks are a lot more forgiving, stuff like that is just basics that you cannot sort of get wrong. So what, I, what we're going to do on here is Ben's actually going to show you guys how to chop a block. We have already pre-measured this out to 13 and a half inches. So we just need to take off this end piece here. But let me swap cameras and we can let Ben show you how to chop a block. So here's the block that we've got ready. Ben comes prepared, he's got his little knee pad there that he's on. So tools, you've got to chop the block, Ben. Uh, hammer and bolster. Hammer and bolster, okay. So you've measured out to where your 13 and a half inches is. 13 and a half. And just in case you want a few taps, going across the block. So just before you flip that block over. So there's the sort of line he's put in. He's not, he's not levered it by any stretch of the imagination or anything like that. He's just putting a little bit of a seam so we can see where he's got to go next. <clears throat> so why do you turn it on the side like that? Just working the way round now to put that line all the way across. It helps it fracture when you get to the end. Join up. Good to go. So is this where you're gonna be hitting it a little bit harder, a little bit yeah? Harder now, and it should hopefully crack nicely. No pressure then, no. <laughs> I can go the full 180 again and go on the other side. Look at that, perfecto. So that is how you uh, how you chop a block. Now, if it is a little bit bumpy and a little bit rough, don't worry about it, because like I say, we, we, we're gonna hide that with the mortar bed anyway. So what I'll do now is I'll throw some more muck down and I'll show you exactly what I mean about when this is all jointed up. That Ben's literally just chopped out the way. So by the time we've put on the actual mortar bed itself, you can't really tell, like I say, that that there is actually a cut edge. We've got the bed on down here now. So where this block's gonna finish is roughly halfway between this block here. What that will enable us to do is put another bed down here and we can continue the half bond. What I'll actually do is I'll put that bed down now so we can get you all in, in one shot. Now with this stuff, guys, it's, it's relatively simple to do. Just, you've got to go at it with the confidence. If you're not a great measurer, always measure twice, three times, four times, and put once. With that said, 
Ben worked on the tools for a living and we've still cocked a few blocks up, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, there's just a few, yeah. But it's one of them. We live and learn. There is a few mistakes in the wall, which I will go through and show you once it's all completed. Just so you've all got the confidence that even with a few, a few minor mistakes, we can still always make up for it. So we get the cut block. Bring that round here. Splice it in. Now here, there's a bit of a drain pipe <laughs> just behind the background. So what we want to do is just push that out the way. And like I say, that's just an eye at the moment. Now when we put this block down, I need a little bit more mortar on that bed. Normally what I do is I come straight across with that block, but I just want to quickly show you on here how we're actually tying in those corners to give it that strength. that bed down now you can if you want go down this middle bit and divot it out like we have done with the rest I personally don't like doing that because I find this middle bit gives me that little bit of elevation to be able to bring the bed back in line okay so next block already pre buttered like I say coming down on that angle slapping it down and away we go bring it into eye as much as possible Take the hang off, take the hang off on the corner, on the other corner, and then we're good to go. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we tie in a wall. And like I just did down that run that you see on the back in a moment, I'm gonna continue down here, and then I'll eventually tie them all back in together, but I'm pretty happy with where that's actually at for the time being. We're just going to go and see if we've got any of the fittings with us today so Ben can get absolutely soaked putting the water feed in um, for these pods because it's going to be far easier to do it now whilst we've got the space down here in that third pod behind than it is to sort of reach down the back. It's still doable because there's still probably a good nine inch gap, uh, six inch probably, a good six inch gap down the bottom. So we can still do it but obviously it'll be a lot easier to show you guys on video whilst we've got the light down there in the corner. But either way, we're hoping to get two full pods done today. So let me snap back to you in a second. Okay, so as you can see from the skylight, it is now pitch black outside. It's about half past five. And I've still got to edit this video to get it up for tonight. So I am definitely, definitely pushed for time. But, <coughs> excuse me, two full pods complete. Thank goodness. Four pallets of bricks gone. Four pallets, yeah. Four pallets of bricks, eight bags of cement, one and a half ton of sand, of sand down. Uh, we've got two pallets of bricks on order from Dave, who's dropping them off this week for us. Um, so that'll be hopefully these finished by next Saturday. We've got the blue tube in there for the pipe work. We've decided to not run the pipe up and over here. We're actually going to run down the side and put the tap on here. The reason for that is the electric board is going to be going up on here. So Ben come up with the ingenious idea to keep the water away from the electrics, which I agree totally, I do concur. So we're going to take that off. And obviously we've got the drainage to be adding in on the next video as well, which will probably add the drainage in before we actually start off on these pods because we've got to come from around about here and angle it all the way down and all the way down through there. So that's the next phase of the build um obviously we've got albish the carpet man bringing up some carpet to line these with and then we've got the pond liners to go in as well uh the spark has been up today uh which is ben's father-in-law so big shout out to him and um, we're all good on electrics we don't need a separate circuit breaker in here because there's a 20 amp circuit breaker and for what we're going to be running in here it's all super low tech but what i'll do is i'll speak i'll get ben to speak to his father-in-law to actually go through the logistics of explaining it in a little bit more detail in regards to why we don't need it um, and the total amount of wattage going through here versus what's currently on the board over there um, just so you guys can see the technical aspect to that um, but that is it for today's video I think it's safe to say we are both shattered exhausted I've not destroyed my Liverpool top I've kept it tucked in and zipped up all day so the sweat has been dripping out of me but I'd probably say we're just under 50% of the way there, aren't we, with this back pod? Because we've got two built, two and a half built. Yeah, 50% of the way there, two and a half built, two and a half left to go. 
But like I say, now because the main structure's in, we're absolutely flying through it now. It's just a shame that we've run out of time today and run out of block as well. So there's not a lot more we could do if we wanted to. Make sure you are subscribed to this to follow the journey on because we've got some tremendous koi uh, that's going to be going into here. And obviously, don't forget, we've got the big build to be doing here as well. Obviously, big shout out to Ben. Obviously, he's come down here again today. Um, worked like an absolute dog. So thank you very much, my friends. Do appreciate it. Um, but like I say, it's an adventure for us both in here. So it's going to be... It's going to be great for you guys to see and follow along as well. Like I say, make sure you are subscribed. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, which is at the Balding Reef. At Insta's slightly different, popping up just down there now, uh, which is at the dot balding dot reefer. Um, and hit me up in the comments as well um, of what you think the first fish in here should be. Obviously, koi, but what kind? Um, do you want tancho? Do you want shusu? shusu? Um, do you want ogons? Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see, and we'll see what we can do. But as ever, stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay happy. You finishing it? Boarding reefer.